Hi, Josh. We're back on the Homestead SMP server for some more lately modded Minecraft. I have been busy. You know that I wanted to finish the landscaping for the mansion, and I also wanted to do some work inside the mansion. And I also got up to a project with Zinvela that I teased last episode. And I'm sure you figured it out by now based on the title of the video. So let's start from the top. I want to show you what we've done landscape-wise over here. Let me see if I can give you a good view from right up here. I have completely finished the back of the mansion. I had to do a whole lot of terraforming along here and over in there to make it match the uphill portion there and the downhill portion here. But I think that it turned out pretty well. It all seems to blend pretty well. All of the edges and angles work. It looks like it's a relatively randomly generated landscape. And, uh, I mean, maybe not so much back here. I did make it a little bit flatter back here because, well, it's a, it's a pretty wide area. And I wanted it to feel sort of like a backyard. So I, I figured that I would take the opportunity to give the mansion a bit of a backyard with a rolling hill sort of situation up to where it met the already existing landscape right up here where these trees are. I did leave some stone here so that it made it a little obvious that this was kind of a sheer cliff from the get. And I tried not to get too close with any of the hill landscaping to the back of the house. And I think we pulled it off really well. I'm still tempted to come around here and put in like the occasional either gravel or dirt path for like, you know, walking paths and little uh more manicured areas but i think that i might just leave it like this because i think it worked out pretty well now i'm gonna show you the front but i'm gonna have to get a quick cut in so that i don't uh spoil it for myself i kind of want to show it off to you and it's it's behind me so i'm just gonna have to i'm gonna have to go over this way and find a nice high vantage to show you from i have already showed you this at the end of last video. But I have done all of this work here. And I... God, was that tiring. It's... It's a lot. I had to fill in everything over here. All of where that swamp water was. Then I had to till absolutely everything and make sure that all of it was hydrated. I went through each of those hydrated areas and put lily pads down so that I would never fall in the water. And then I went from water block to water block and sectioned it off with industrial hemp from Immersive Engineering. And that gave us this grid pattern. And I put something different in every single one. A few of them are duplicated because I sort of ran out of uh, unique crops. I think, I, I, I assumed that there were more crops than I had made uh, individual squares over here. But I was wrong, I made too damn many squares. But if you look over there, you can see where the grass gets darker, right there, where the swamp is. You don't see any of that on the map. And I, I'm, I'm not going to show you that, because there's something just to the left of our screen right now that I don't want to spoil just yet. Now, from here, which is just the showpiece, let's head inside, and I will show you the in-progress project that I've got going on in here. Oh, I, I realized after last episode that I, I hadn't showed you this tree. It's nothing fancy, but I did custom build it. Uh, it, it ended up kind of wonky and a little bit wider than it is deep, because this room is wider than deep. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it turned out decent. I did use fruit logs in there, not that you can really see them. <laughs> But I, I tried to do my best with the limited space, and uh, it, it's nothing fancy or special, but I'm kind of proud of it. And, you know, like I said, this is just kind of a, a conservatory where you can get a taste of nature without actually being in nature. Now, here's what I've been working on. And it's not done yet. There is nothing in any of these. But these are all hopper botany pots, as you can see there with the, with the one probe readout. And these are all crates that are going to take whatever we're growing here. This is two stacks of hopped botany pots and crates. 
and I think that it's going to be a really cool showpiece. You'll be able to see absolutely everything growing in here. But uh, it's not a ton of storage, and that's actually totally fine. I don't want a ton of storage, because I really don't plan to use all of this stuff. And now it's night, and I need to sleep. Check this out. I have figured out that this is kind of the perfect exit from this building. It's the simple pleasures in life, man, you know? So, as I said, this project is incomplete, and it's not just because I haven't put all of the plants in here. It's because I do want to do something with this room. We've got so much vertical space that we can work with. We've got this huge area that's just kind of semi-supported walkway and completely free-floating crates up here. So I, I do want to do something with the area. And that's kind of why I left a gap back here between the crates and the wall. We can decorate this a little bit. I want to make it look decent. Now I am reserving this circle out front for something a little special. I haven't designed it yet, but I'm going to build a huge showpiece fountain right here. And I'm going to have water flowing, and uh, I'm hoping that it'll look fantastic. We've got a huge footprint to work with, so we can make ourselves a really large fountain out of this. But that remains to be seen. I still haven't even started to design it. I've tried looking at color palettes a little bit, and I'm just, I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with it. So... I've got a little time before this episode has to be posted. I'm going to play with it, and I'm hoping to get it in this episode. And if not, I hope you'll understand. <laughs> this has been a lot of work. Like, seriously, just just a ton of work. It looks great from up there, but, but from down here, you really get a sense of scale. Just wandering through, you know, it, it's just, there's so much here. There's just so many crops growing. And this farm is so big that the house, like, unrenders, you know, it unloads because we're just too far away from it. And now with the understanding that this project will be completed later, I think it's time to move on to the collaboration I did with Simvella. So do we need to, like, dig out under this so we can put a uh, uh, minecart? Yes, exactly. Uh, I just love that you already know how things work. Ow. Watch out. Well, pretty sure we watched the same video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so too. If we see the same video, basically, we put down a rail, we put down a cart assembler on top of that, and with a minecart in it. Thank you. Ooh, Please not. And then we just need to power it, right? We need to power it, then it stops, and then with a wrench, you right-click it, and this is the blue spawner. I love it. So basically, we could take this with us again, and then do the exact same thing to put it down again. Absolutely. Let's go find more blaze spawners. I love this. <laughs> I love it too. I Oh my god. When I saw that video from, from ZF, I was just blown away. I was like, you, you're you telling me that we I could have just put my skeleton spawner anywhere. Great. Okay. Exactly. I had the exact same thought. I was like, what? Why did I not know this? It's amazing what the community is... Oh, I found another one. <laughs> well, you want to do this one? Sure. You got the wrench, you got the cart assembler, you got the lever, a minecart, and the wrench. That should be everything. I'm gonna put the spawner in my backpack for now, just because I don't want to lose it accidentally. Probably a good call. Oh my god, it's so easy! Alright. Let's dig some stuff out. The rail, the cart assembler, the minecart, leather, <laughs> wrench. Look how easy this is. It's way too easy. So it should dumb. be more difficult. <laughs> I think. So after this one, we have four spawners. Um. I guess the question is, how much is too much? 
That's not a good question for me. <laughs> I know. Fortress! Yep, I see it. And I see lots and lots and lots of wither skeletons. I'm being attacked by. And I see wow, a mosquito. Hi, friends. I'm gonna make a safe area. Not a single skull. That hurts my feeling. I found one. Every single time when I think there are no blaze spawners, you're like, find one! I found one over here. <laughs> you know what? I should just let you be the one who takes <laughs> There's no guarantee that I'll actually be the one to find them. Oh, oh hello. Rude. Alright, I think you get the point. In total, Zinvella and I spent about two and a half hours exploring the nether, jumping from fortress to fortress, and collecting blaze spawners. I believe on this trip we picked up a total of nine, and then at one point while we were placing them, uh, we burned up a couple. So we had to go out again on another short excursion, which I didn't bother to get on camera, and pick up a couple more. Why don't we move on to the structure that we built to house our spawner? And here is where we decided to house our spawners. I'm not gonna lie to you, I spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to figure out a good pattern for this. And so did Zinvella. We each went into our own creative single-player world and tried to come up with a pattern that would look like a block of netherrack. This is the closest that we got after, I think, several hours each in design work. I'm kind of proud of it. It worked out pretty well, but it was a big pain. We tried to make it look like it was embedded into the landscape, and uh, I think we kind of nailed it. But I'm not sure still about the front over here. It's just kind of in the water. We might bring out the land a little bit, or we might just leave it. I'm not entirely sure. I think it looks pretty good sunken in like this, and I'm going to wait until it's nighttime, uh, so like another five minutes, so that I can give you a good shot of what it looks like at night, because this this lava falling through right here is just fantastic. It gives a really great subtle lighting effect. And I'm sure you noticed when I was over there on top of those trees, but it is in real close proximity to our farmhouse. That's why I was trying so hard to only show you views from like over there looking over here because I was trying to block this with the, the view of the hillside. We, we've had this in place for longer than I've had any of these farm plots in place. And uh, I, I really didn't want to spoil it. And that's also why I didn't look at the map because if you look, it's very obvious. This takes up exactly one chunk. If you can see the highlighted section, this is exactly one chunk of area. And it's only three chunks away from the farm. <laughs> so it's real close. It was real obvious. And I, I didn't want to spoil it. I'm pretty sure there's some lava falling over here behind this hillside. So ignore that if you can. But this all is just so well lit at night. From all the little lava pockets that we've got in there. I think, yep, there's the lava. I think that this looks so fantastic with all this little backlighting. And and I think the cow appreciates it too. Uh, it's, it's well lit. I don't think anything's going to spawn up here. We've got enough up here that it lights the whole area pretty well. The only thing we have to worry about is stuff wandering over. And I think this stands out in a pretty fantastic way from the landscape. Why don't we take a look inside? I'm going to show you a little bit of footage that Zinvella and I recorded while we were trying to place the spawners. Moment of truth, it's about to get bad in here. It's about to get real bad in here. Oh, jeez. Ow, 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 ow. I might die in here. So, I wasn't planning on jumping right into this, but then, uh, all this happened. Uh, I was gonna preface this, this clip a little bit more than I did. 
Uh, but it all just very suddenly happened. I am being bullied real hard by these blazes. I screwed up, and I got several blaze spawners burned, and I feel like an idiot. Well, we know that this, uh, this spawner's a massive success anyway. Uh... I am being bullied. Oh, it's so much quieter in here now. Okay. We are moving the spawners down, because when we stand down here where we have the killing chamber set up, they don't activate. Look at me! Don't look at her! Look at me! Look at me! I don't have any arrows. I can't shoot them. Fuck. Oh my god, they're all in place. Alright, and now that you've seen what all went into building this place, or at least the, the inner workings of it... <laughs> Hello, Blazes, I hear you. Why don't I take you inside the killing chamber? So it's just kind of hidden in the in the, the hillside here. Uh, we did have to do a little bit of terraforming. I believe Zinvella finished this off while I wasn't paying attention. And uh, we just made ourselves a little elevator shaft. So you may notice that I've got the gear shift here and the rope pulley like we used for the vertical drills. And I did a little bit of redstone work back here. And now I can just push this button and we ride right down an elevator shaft that we decorated to be evocative of flames. We decided to go with a nether brick type floor and flame motif walls and ceiling here. We've got a little bit of a storage system set up so that when we kill all the blazes... I'm gonna have to turn the game sounds down, aren't I? Uh, all of their items get pumped out into, you can see them back there, immersive engineering conveyor belts. They all come along here and they ride up conveyor belts and then through hopper chains. And all of the, all of the blaze rods just collect here. Everything in this place is powered just by these water wheels. And we've got five of them hooked up here. And you can see them right there. We've just got the typical C shape of water. And if you come back here into the back room, we've got a rotation speed controller that we've just got set up here. And it goes along to a gear shift and to a bunch of, uh, bunch of gear boxes. And right in there, you can see kind of, we've got them set up so that they get, all get pulled along those, those belts that you saw when we were setting up the, the spawners. And if I get just the right angle, you can kind of see the spawners in there. These guys are so noisy. Oh, and also, uh, I meant to point out, this is not dependent on being in the right location. All you have to do is press the button from whichever end you happen to be on. And if the elevator's not already there, it calls the elevator. And I'm, I'm kind of proud of this this setup that I that I managed to figure out. Let me see if I can get back here. There we go. It's just a redstone link hooked up to the block where the button is. And the way I got it set up up here is that that redstone link connects to redstone all along here and over to a powered toggle latch. The powered toggle latch switches directions on that gear shift. So, the way this redstone is set up, whichever place this elevator is not at, it wants to be at. I mean, that's the, the simplest way that I can find to phrase it. Uh, the powered toggle latch and the gear shift work with the rope pulley to either lower it or raise it, depending on which one it's which position it's not at. It, it I, I just kind of played around with it until I figured it out, and uh, I'm really proud of it. it it worked out super well okay uh the game is getting incredibly framey right now because there are so many of these things and the the only major downside to this farm is that we don't soften these blazes up at all before we kill them so we just have to swing 
and um, that's unfortunate, but we couldn't find an easy solution to that, so we just left it. And uh, I'm sure that this would be a lot more effective if my sword had sweeping edge on it, but it does not, and so I just have to accept that, and uh, it takes a little bit of extra work. But as you can see, the experience is absolutely pouring in. And as you can hear, they don't immediately pour down into this chute. There's still a lot of them up there. But that's fine, because we have a ton of blaze rods. And you can see they're still pouring in through the hopper chains and the conveyor belts and stuff. Endless supply of blaze rods and blaze powder if we want it. And I'm going to call this project complete. We don't need to spend any serious time up here. We're going to be spending all our time downstairs, and we get a well-decorated room, we get a small storage area, we get to show off the power that we're generating in order to power all of that stuff, and uh, we get the incredibly noisy blazes. Project complete, right? I'm going to call this one a win. I am working on filling the botany pots. I'm going to do everything, which is why I have all these flowers in my inventory. And I still need to swing by a flower forest and pick up the rest of the tulips and stuff. Uh, otherwise, we're almost done. The only thing that I really could not get my hands on was a wither rose. Like That's the only thing that I couldn't easily acquire, because who wants to deal with a rogue wither and, and you know collecting all the skulls to make him and then dealing with him after he kills a bunch of mobs and creates wither roses. Well, Zinvella reminded me that they sell wither roses in their little market here. But the market has very non-traditional prices. I love this place. It's... I don't know if I've showed it to you before. It, all the little vendors, super cute little stalls, and uh, they sell... Eight blue ice per stack, and I just happen to have blue ice. So, buy me a stack of wither roses, and I'm only going to use one, <laughs> but that's okay. Now I just need to come over here, and uh, almost, I almost made it through. I'm not sure if you could hear that just then, that little peep in the buzz, that's, uh, that's a hummingbird. I believe at some point in the past, Zinvella lost a bunch of hummingbirds from their property, and... Uh, I've caught two or three of them and returned them, but uh, there appear to still be at least a couple wandering around out there. Now, here's what we've got so far. I have gathered all of the coral. I've got mushrooms, ferns, grass, sea grass, all this stuff. And then we've got all of these seeds. Now, I've done the counting, and because I have an absolutely shitty working memory... I promptly forgot the number, but there's over a hundred things that we can grow in these botany pots. So apparently making two stacks was not overkill. Now I'm not going to sort it by like what we're growing. I'm not going to be like, oh, there's flowers over here and then there's corals over here. I'm just going to alphabetize absolutely everything. And then we can walk in and start from, let's say we go up the stairs and this is A, then that'll be Z. And we're just going to go all the way through alphabetically. And I think I'm going to do the top row first, and then I'll move on to the bottom row and continue the alphabetization. I will let you know once I've got most of that in place. I was having a hard time finding a place where I could get a good angle on this whole thing. So I just stuck myself up here. <laughs> anyway, we're done with this place at least insofar as getting everything into the botany pots. Now let me come down here and show you what we've got. Uh, it turns out I'm an idiot and can't count. There are less than a hundred things. If you look here in the menu, and I right click on this, and then we click on botany pots, there are 48 pages. Each page has two recipes, which makes 96. I was able to knock off a few of those because, for instance, there's carrot seeds, but also carrots. There's two different mods in this mod pack that have onions in them, so it's a duplicated recipe. There is a recipe for sunflowers and also sunflower seeds. So we were able to knock a few recipes off. However, I went through everything. I thought that I did all of the legwork and had everything figured out. And then I also 
had marshmallow root and flax seeds in my collection of things that were going to be planted and neither one of them for some reason can be planted in here so we may have fallen a couple items short and i just haven't figured out what items i'm missing but why don't we take a brief tour of what we've got we've got flowers bamboo all sorts of food all the coral you can see that they're sitting in water they look real cool we've got stuff down here we've got sea pickles We've got all this stuff. We've got the, the sugar cane in sand. We've got cactus in sand. Where's the cactus? There it is. We've got all our various melon type things. We've got all of the corals and all the flowers. We've got sweet berries. All the foods and, and growable materials we could possibly want. We've got all the nether stuff growing. This place is super cool. I'm so happy with how much stuff we've got. But it ends here because I don't know how to count. So the rest of this row this entire quarter and this entire quarter are all empty and that really bums me out i might just start over again with the alphabetization just to fill it out but uh i'm not completely sure about that yeah i think just to have it filled out some more i will i will finish adding to this and uh and then it'll be time to redo the inside of this room a little bit so here I am, back up in the ceiling. Uh, I wanted to get another good view of this. It's still obviously unfinished, but I decided to fill in the walls with unstripped dark oak and uh, just make a, a somewhat little geometrically patterned floor. Uh, I used polished dark scoria and uh, quartz and just decided to make some little little swoops and swirls, and uh, I, I think it looks kind of nice. I don't think that I'm going to bother uh, filling out any of the, like, second floor of this. Here, let me turn my cursor back on. I don't think I'm going to fill this out at all. I thought about putting slabs all the way under this row of, of uh, cabinets, but I, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. I, I kind of like the way that it's open, and there's space above everything growing i thought about giving this room a ceiling and actually making it an enclosed room and then like sealing things up and and uh you know making it like a hallway leading up to this and then i figured why we've got this big open area just leave it big and open and make it feel like you know just a big cavernous building of a house and i kind of like it like that so i think i'm gonna leave this as is and uh i i, I think we're gonna just leave all the the botany pots doing their thing i don't know if you can see from here but i i did finish filling out all of these pots uh, i did start over again alphabetically from i think over here where it ended and i just swooped all the way around and filled it in so uh, i'm gonna call that good i'm satisfied with it i'm happy with it i don't think i'm gonna bother lighting it up i'll just make sure not to be over here at night when these guys are collecting uh, i did see a creeper last night i was just hanging out up here letting the botany pots work and trying to figure out if i was satisfied with the pattern i've redesigned it several times but i think i like this one so i think i'll just leave it like this and uh i think i'm gonna call that so i know that we didn't get to the fountain that i promised but i'm gonna call this episode here i'll talk to you soon brother i miss you